Hey everyone, welcome to Crest TV. Uh, we're out on, on site. I'm here in Orangeburg at our QA production facility here. I'm joined by Chris Bell, Director of QA and Engineering. Hi Chris, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm very good. Now, uh, you've given me this outfit. Now, I'm sure it's to make me look silly and you've given me some special glasses. Tell me, what's all this about? Uh, so we're going to head out to our uh, quality uh, testing lab in a few minutes, our, our PRT lab. Um, we're going to go out to our metrology lab and we're going to see all the uh, awesome things we do out there to uh, make sure that our products are of uh, great quality. And tell us, what do you do here at Crestron? Crest because I should have asked you before. My team, in, uh, uh, specifically quality assurance engineering, um, we make sure that all of our products are fit for use in the field, that they're robust and reliable. Um, and that you know everything uh, is is in spec, meets its requirements, um, so that we can make sure, do our part to make sure that our customers get a product uh, that's the highest level of quality. Very cool. So in this video, we're going to go and break stuff and uh, and forcefully try and make things stop working. So uh, let's go over to the lab and let's go and see what's going on in there. So so Chris, tell us what's going on behind us here. This looks like we're, we're testing cables. Now cables are just, you just go and buy them from Best Buy, don't you? A couple of dollars for an HDMI cable or whatever? Yeah, so, uh, so uh, a lot of people sometimes think like, oh, it's just a cable. Uh, especially, you know, if you're home use, you go get something from your TV from like Best Buy, like you said. But uh, with Crestron cables, it's not just a cable. There's a lot that goes into it. Uh, they're, they function sometimes in very specific ways. And uh, there's a lot that can go wrong with them. So uh, we've invested a lot of money uh, and time in putting together a specific cable testing program um, in our lab here. So um, right here is our uh, cable swing tester. It tests the um, uh, strain relief boot on the end of each cable to make sure that after X number of cycles, depending on the use case, that the, the strain relief won't break, that there'll no be, there won't be any... Um, you know, broken uh, conductors inside the cable. You see the kind of frayed ends, don't you, on the old yeah. cables where you say the boot's gone and it's sort of right. cut through. Um, and of course, that's going to be, you know, the killer to the whole system. You can have the, the best system in the world, but it can be let down by a poor quality, right. low-cost cable. Exactly, yeah. So we, we put a lot of time into different uh, mechanical tests on our cables. You know, we have this flex tester here, like we said. Um, the robot behind us that you can see running, that's also, it's exercising a cable in its final state, right, in yeah. some of our cable retractors. Yeah, we'll take a look at that in a second. So, so how many, what, what is, I mean, is this like simulating years of use or days, of, months of use? Uh, What's the kind of cycles this is doing? Yeah, it, it simulates years of use, so it goes on, yeah, the level of years is the scale. Uh, and there's lots of other mechanical tests we do too, you know, uh, insertion and removal, mating force, um, you know, like a, a weighted cantilever test, it's all um, investment into making sure that the cable is robust uh, for use in the field and our customers are getting what they expect. Um, and there's a lot of uh, electrical validation that goes into it too. This setup here has some uh, signal validation equipment, so it's a whole sequence. After every mechanical test, there's a signal validation, right? There's a signal validation first, then mechanical test, signal validation, test, signal validation, to make sure that throughout the whole process, uh, there's no uh, signal loss. So even if it looks good and it hasn't sort of broken, you right. need to check and make sure inside there's no actual fatigue on the cable. Right. And yeah, it could look fine on the outside, but internally there could be, you know, the slightest little break in a conductor, and that can actually impact uh, the signal integrity. Um, a good analogy is, is uh, it's like a rope, right? Like a big, thick rope, like let's say a big rope can hold, you know, 500 pounds when it's all together, and you just slice a little sliver on the end there, and it's not going to hold 500 pounds. Maybe it holds... 450 right but it's not you know it's not at its strongest right and you'll you'll notice that right so it's the same with a cable like it doesn't have to be completely severed to not work well you can have just the slightest little break yeah. and you'll get a bad signal so. now I'm, i want to see the robot so can we can we move over to the robot and have a look at that yeah. this looks really cool tell us what's going on here chris all right so uh this robot and the table that it's moving on uh we use to do uh all of our repetitive cycle testing that really requires like a, a human-like motion. Um, you know, it's you can't have somebody sitting at a table yanking a cable retractor back and forth 10,000 times, you know, the arms will fall off. So uh, we invested in this robot and this gantry table here, and uh, it's an amazing piece of equipment. It's It's been a huge uh, impact to our lab and to Crestron's products. Very cool. And again, you, you'll, you'll check for fatigue physically, you know, visually, and then you'll check for actual uh, you know, signal tests on that as well. Yeah, this is, and again, this is part of the cable uh, testing program we put together. So it's testing the retractor itself, right, and all the mechanisms inside. We can open it up and look for wear and tear on the gears and pulleys and, and whatnot that's inside there. Um, but it's also part of the cable testing program. So we stop at, uh, you know, 
predetermined intervals that we work out with engineering and we'll inspect it inside for physical damage and then we'll also run the signal validation test on the cables and make sure there's you know nothing going on that we can't see um, and then we go back to cycling and uh, repeat until we hit whatever the final number of cycles is. Very cool, very cool. Right, wh where are we off to next? We've obviously seen the, 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 the robot and we've seen the, uh, the load testers. What's next to see? Uh, we can go into the vibe room and check out the vibe table and the drop tester. Oh, I like the sound of this. Drop tester and vibe table. Let's go. So we've looked at cables, but one of the big parts of Crestron is obviously our touchscreens and our controllers. That's you know, part of our heritage. Uh, talk to me about what we're seeing behind us here. Uh, so right behind us here, we have our Instron force gauge. Uh, so we do uh, a lot of our mechanical destructive testing here on this piece of equipment. Um, right now there's a keypad in there. Um, you know, we can characterize the uh, force displacement curve of a button to make sure it's you know, within uh, the specification of the actual button itself that's on the, uh, the circuit board. Um, and you know, we do cycle testing on our, our keypads also, anything with buttons. So we'll cycle it on another piece of equipment and come over here at certain intervals. We'll put it on here and make sure there's no degradation in whatever the baseline was of the force displacement curve. So, so destructive, we are really testing stuff to yes, destruction we are, there. We are breaking things, hence the protective shields. <laughs> and, uh, and us wearing the goggles. I did wonder why we're wearing the goggles. goggles yeah. Yeah. yeah, So, and, and it's not just keypads. We'll put touchscreens on here. Um, you know, we do a variety of tests on our touchscreens. Um, pushing tests to make sure there's no uh, uh, weird like display artifacts that pop up if you apply you know, a, a certain amount of uh, pressure onto the screen. Um, we'll do pulling tests uh, to make sure that the bond on the, the touchscreen, okay, the bond yeah. of the touchscreen to the housing uh, is very strong. Um, so that's really why we need this uh, shield here because you, don't want, to, <laughs> Shattering you don't want that to yeah, pop in your face. Um, yeah, and we'll pull, try to pull the screen off. Uh, so a lot of different things we can do with this piece of equipment. It's, it's uh, very versatile. And what's the sort of cycle test? I mean, how long do these kind of tests run? I mean, obviously we've seen the cable testing run. Uh, is it sort of running, you know, again, through like a five year, it's sort of simulating like a five year yeah. use cycle of the product? Yeah, we, we generally try to simulate um, a little over what the expected life of the product would be in the field. Um, so anywhere from five to eight years, five to 10 years. Um, and the tests take, and it depends on how fast a piece of equipment moves when it tests to. The tests can take a week altogether. Sometimes it could take two weeks. Uh, it really depends on how much we're doing. But um, yeah, it definitely is a very uh, valuable test to run. So. so this looks interesting. We've got some kind of x-ray microscope thing going on here. Tell us what's going on and we're seeing in this shot here. Yeah, so this is our Keyent microscope. Uh, it's a very high powered microscope. Um, with uh, the lens we have on, you can get up to uh, a thousand uh, level of zoom. Wow. Um, but we're not at that right now with what I'm showing you because I wanted to give a nice picture of uh, what we can do with it. If we went into a thousand level of zoom, <laughs> you'd be looking at it like <laughs> the extreme levels of detail with every little solder joint that um, doesn't really paint the picture of what this really does. I mean, it, it is important to have that level, but for the purposes of my explanation. Um, so, uh, we use this high-powered microscope for a lot of different things um, within my group and even with, within some of the other groups that are under uh, corporate quality. Um, right now what we have on here is a, a component called a ball grid array and um, what we use the microscope with these for is our dye and pry process. So uh, with those particular components there's you know, hundreds of little solder balls underneath the body of the component that you can't see by eye if you ever needed to visually inspect it. Um, so what we do is uh, there's a process where you uh, soak the board in a dye, you pull vacuum on it, and um, if there's any cracks in the solder joints, the red dye will get into those cracks when you pull vacuum on it. Um, and then we go onto the force gauge that we saw earlier, uh, and we pull the chip off and essentially split it in half from the board. <laughs> and, uh, and then we come here to the microscope and we look for any signs of dye penetration. So in this example, uh, you can see uh, along the bottom there, uh, all those uh, solder balls are all red, so yeah. dye leaked into those. Um, up on the top there, like the, the four across the top, they're nice and silver. Uh, there's no dye on those. Um, so it's, uh, it's a very uh, value-add thing to be able to do to assess chips that you can't assess by eye and uh, see if there's any uh, solder defects going on. Yeah, I guess in the old days you used to be able to see the components and see the solder joints, but now yeah. with surface mount and as you say yeah. BGA, everything is hidden away and everything is such fine detail. Right. Again, to try and pick up those those micro issues, yeah. um, you have to then do this destructive level right. of testing to be able to see what's going on behind the scenes. Right. Okay, so we, we've seen stuff being broken and, uh, and you know, we've tested it to destruction, but we've now got finished boxes behind us. Tell us, this is the final sort of stage. Everything's been tested. You've put the quality 
in the box here, and this is the final kind of warehousing stage when stuff actually goes out to the customer after mm -hmm. to testing, right? Right. Uh, that's correct, yeah. So after uh, the product goes through its paces in our lab and everything's been inspected in our metrology area, um, you know, we, we do a thorough review of all the results of everything, you know, within our own group and with our, you know, the various engineering teams we, uh, you know, we partner with and collaborate with on a daily basis. Um, and we make sure that we're satisfied with everything. And if we're satisfied that uh, everything is good, all the requirements are met, then we move forward with launching the product and it ends up right here in, in these nice white boxes. Beautiful. And, and do we test every single product that goes through, or how many yes. do we test? Yes, uh, every single new product gets tested um, in our lab by you know a network of uh, of you know some of the other groups within Creshon that run tests on our products for different purposes than ours. Um, uh, everything um, you know, yeah, yeah, everything runs through its paces. It's every new product um, in our lab. We run upwards of thousands of tests every year on all our new products in our metrology lab in the inspection area. Um, we inspect roughly, you know, uh, half a million dimensions on 10,000 or so parts every single year. Um, there's a lot that goes into uh, making sure that, you know, every single product uh, gets satisfactorily checked before we ship it out. Very, very, very cool. So the quality that you buy when you buy a Crestron product is all tested through here. And again, we just wanted to lift the lids, take you behind the scenes and give you this view of what's going on here at Crestron and say what you're buying when you buy a product in one of these beautiful white boxes. Uh, Chris, thank you for your time. Thank you for the tour. Very, very interesting very around here. Welcome. And thank you all for joining us here on Crest TV. Please like, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, tell your friends that Crest TV is the place to be and I'll catch you on the next one.